one rpg kingdom kid here back with some more world ends with you final remix in the previous video we read the the uh reports for shiki's week now we're going to read beats uh uh not beats joshua's week because joshua's week is next so let's go back in here and i just i just wanted to change the music so like that's why so yeah they actually i i didn't even know but i bought the kingdom mixes for the for this so that's actually pretty cool that they had the kingdom mixes here so Alright, so we learned we learned quite about a bit about like some of the stuff with the secret reports uh, so far, but uh, there's still a lot more to learn. Alright, so let's start off with Joshua Day One. I'm very excited for this one because this one's like pretty exciting. So let's go you know, in with it. <clears throat> As predicted by the composers, Proxy has ended the game a second time. The Proxy has pro has proven his aptitude and will be joined in the next game by the composer himself as the new partner. There are three reasons behind the composer's choice of actions. One, to ascertain the conductor's strategy. Two, to educate his proxy. And three, to protect him. While his, with his return to the UG, the limits of the composer's abilities will be relaxed. However, using his ability could reveal his identity. As such, he will need to continue to limit himself for a while longer. This presents a certain set of risks. The greatest risk, however, lies with the composer joining the proxy for the game. The composer's presence, his, tem his tremendously high vibe, will place a great deal of physical and psych psychological strain on the proxy. Furthermore, the proxy's victory in the previous game has won him back his memory. The self-actualization loop finding the proxy is thus stronger than ever. More deeply, in, in scoring even than the envy, from envy cleared from Shiki in the previous game. There is a possibility of the proxy's soul destabilizing negating its pro process during the previous game. Slight problems also persist with the proxy's personality. How long will the proxy be able to bear being side by side with the composer? Mm, very interesting indeed, don't you agree? So yeah, so Mr. Hankoma knows that like, okay, it's gonna be very interesting to see how Neku is gonna act around the per around his proxy, especially since the he killed him and such. But I don't think Mr. Hankoma knows that Neku only got back some of his memories. He didn't get the full memory lot, uh, his full memories back. I don't. I honestly don't know if that's the case. Uh, maybe we might learn it if he uh, did or didn't know about that. So let's move on. Today, an alert was handed down: the discovery of a fallen angel. A fallen angel is one who has broken the angel's code. A criminal. Their crime: revealing the secrets of Taboo Noise Refinery to the game master Minamoto. Minamoto knows the composer's RG identity, secret even to the conductor, and has chased him into the Rio ground. The fallen angel may also have supplied him with this information. So here we go, we're learning about like how Minamoto learned about taboo noise and such. So it was by the fallen angel. Very interesting, would you all agree? Minamoto's lust to take the composer's place and his potential to do so comes second only to that of the conductor. Despite being a complete outsider in the wage wager between composer and conductor. He stands to hinder the composer greatly. It is entirely possible Minamoto may rise to the office of conductor before he wages his, before this wager has been decided. All eyes from the higher plane are on this game for the future of Shibuya. Should its results be invalidated by outside interference, the angel's disappoint disappointment would be vast. These are actually pretty short reports for the Shiki. So, what's this fallen angel's goal? Dominate dominion over the underground? Retribution against the angels? Whatever the case, we must carefully monitor Minamoto's action and stay vigilant of this fallen angel. Okay, I don't, who it is. I don't think they ever do because we never really fight fight anyone that's like seemed to be like, oh, you know, super important. Like, never mind. So, yeah, so we learned how Minamoto learned about the taboo noise, which I think. Uh, does that come into effect in day three more so than day two? I don't remember, but anyway. Oh, why did I do that? Here we go. Here we go. All right. I was finally able to hand over the phone tracking application the composer requests some time back. I informed the composer it was ready three days ago, but they apparently had no time to come pick it up. Just shows how careful the proxy is planning each move. The application detects the com conductor's imagination. With it, one can walk around Shibuya and piece together the conductor's strategy. 
At this point, even I cannot fathom the conductor's plan. I'll have to rely on the information gathered by the composer. While I wait for its findings, I will work with the composer's next order, a second revision of the phone's functionality. Today only marks my first contact with the proxy since we, we formed the attack with the composer. He appears considerably wary of his partner at the present time. As expected, the psychological strain is severe. So severe, in fact, that most players will be unable to continue. Right now, the only thing keeping the proxy in the game is his entry fee. At least his dangerously strained state of mind is acting to heighten his soul. I saw no sign of relapse or destabilization. Rather, the return of his memory seems to have yielded only positives. Again, it do this doesn't really point out that, like, hey, you got your full memories back, but you got he just got his met, like, he just didn't get how he died, I guess. Or maybe, I, I still don't know if Mr. Arnkill knows about that or not. Well, let's read the fourth page. Maybe he'll point that out now. I look forward to watching the proxy's continued growth. No, nope, that didn't help at all. <laughs> it was all a bunch of nothing there. Yeah, it's very interesting. Like, it keeps getting more and more interesting as we keep going along with this. How um, all this, how they're all connecting together. And, uh... <sighs> Like, it's very interesting to, um, see how they're all, um, how Mr. Honeycomb is preserving this and how we're getting more in-depth about, um, Neku's growth as a player and as a person, uh, as he continues to play these games. Uh, we're almost done with Josh's report and we're not even at 10 minutes yet. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Let's go to game score. All right, this one's a bit long, so that's nice. The composer's report indicated rough going with his investigation. Expect the limits upon his abilities. Meanwhile, Minamoto has not issued any missions. Reaper elites must be alarmed as well. Perhaps this is more of the Fallen Angel's influence. As I've said, Minamoto is suspected of a liaison with the Fallen Angel. The Fallen Angel may have chosen Minamoto for a few reasons. First, non-desired None desired the composer's office more. Minamoto's observation was great enough to compel him to pursue the composer into the real ground. Unlike simple reapers, however, the composer's powers are not lost in the RG. I can imagine the shock drawing on Minamoto's face as I write this. Yes, the composer must down tune to the frequency of the real ground, limiting his powers. However, Minamoto is in the same boat. As a result, the difference in their abilities remain unchanged. Thus, the assassination attempt failed. While Minamoto's efforts were fruitless, they serve as ample proof of his convictions. The second reason the Fallen Angel may have targeted him is his lack of loyalty to the Reaper's organization as and his preference for solo action. His, distaste, his distaste for cooperation meant little change for him revealing the Fallen Angel's presence. The third reason is, is his con constant, constantly unconventional aesthetics. His bizarre actions regularly cause confusion among those around him. Even if the fallen angels, angel were to urge him to do something out of the ordinary, it would be ordinary for him. No one would suspect a thing. This is why he is an ideal target for a fallen angel to work his agenda without raising suspicion. At least it seems a logical conclusion. The question now is, why has Minamoto abandoned the game and what is he doing? I suspect that his only current objective is to take out the composer. If he is like if so, he is likely preparing for the seventh day and his opportunity to confront the players. Just what did the Fallen Angel tell Minamoto? Perhaps no one will ever know. And unfortunately, it's looking that way, unless we learn about that in a new day, which I highly doubt. But yeah, you never know, I suppose. So yeah, they're getting more into like, okay, so Minamoto knew, knows, knew who the composer was, and that's probably because of the Fallen Angel. Because I guess maybe the angel, because the angels are probably like, well, we know everyone type thing, and the, or they always know who the composer is, regardless of how low to his frequency is as such. Um, uh, what else? So yeah, um, I believe this, yeah, this is when we went to Utagawa. So this is when Neku learned that, like, oh my, this is when Neku thinks that, oh my gosh, Joshua is the one that killed me. When, I mean, it was true. But at the time, it's it wasn't. At the time, it wasn't true. Uh, it's very odd in that sense. Like, oh my gosh, we learned something that's like, oh my god, Joshua actually killed me. But then, you know, we learn on day seven that that wasn't the case. It was actually Minamoto. But then, 
we get to the end of the game and it's like, oh wait, it actually was true. You actually did kill me, uh, Joshua, you son of a bitch. So. Oh. It's like, this, this is different than how it was last time. It's because I went down all the way for a second. Alright, day five. Let's, uh, let's see what, uh, let's see. Yeah, so this is when, um, this is when he's going to say that he's a dealer. This will be very sick. Proxy feels an affiliation for the art of the designer cat, myself. As he was picked by the composer, this is highly co coincidence. Hardly, this is hardly coincidence. It was an inevitability. Cat's creative works are embodied with command codes. His art acts as a medium for mass imprinting. The imprinting players use works only as an individual basis. However, through art, one can affect anyone who comes into con contact with the work. I, embed I imbue my art with two command codes. The first is, enjoy the moment more. This strengths the imagination. The proxy received this signal loud and clear, though past trauma precluded him from responding accordingly. The second code, gather, close to those with strong imaginations. Hence the inevitability. Why wouldn't the composer find his worth proxy standing in front of my graffiti? Single reason exists for rigging my art in this way. The creation of the future requires imagination. My art is widely accepted in Shibuya. This proves that there that those with imagination sufficient to create the future are gathering in the area. Shibuya's future is looking very bright. So we learn more about like the reasoning behind uh Hanikoma's reason for being called Cat and why he does what he does. It's very again, it gets all so interesting to like learn about all this stuff and as we keep learning more and more about it it gets more and more interesting like you keep learning like oh my gosh like you know uh him being cat is a part to gather people with high imagination so that they can create a better future for shibuya and for the world as a whole i'm sure so this is very interesting for sure like how how long how many times can i keep saying for sure for sure for sure for sure for sure but um, yeah, no, it's a uh, it's a very good um thing that uh, he does with this uh, whole imagination thing uh, with his imprinting and uh, as cat. So I wonder why he picked that name. In all honesty, it's because he's just like how uh, like did he pick it himself? Or did he just, or did he just, oh my god, hi! Or did he just like start being called cat as just like for the hell of it? I guess. Um, no, well, no, well, no. Uh, that's point. Um, I'm, I'm sure we might know. Um, but it's very interesting. Like again, I completely don't know about the whole fallen. I did not know about the fallen angel aspect at all. Like, uh, like this is very interesting to know about the fallen angels or angel. Uh, hold on a second. Sorry about that. I uh, that was my mom on the phone uh, talking about my laptop. Apparently, I can extend the warranty for it. So. I feel like I'm getting close to like where I should just buy a new laptop anyway, but uh, uh, that's neither here nor there right now. But yeah, so yeah, we were talking about like the fallen angels and such that um, uh, I don't know. the time. Uh, okay, we only got two more reports of Joshua's uh, week. Uh, if anything, I'll probably just go fight some noise as I talk about some uh, stuff. So that's gonna be seen. All right. I have finished revision 2 of the phone tracking app, which allows it to detect the Shibuya River. The composer aims to use this device to convey the river's location to the proxy. Before passing that knowledge along, the composer needed to understand the conductor's plan, as if that said he felt confident in his hypothesis. The composer has encountered red skull pins everywhere the, conduct the, the detector had laid, the same pins I created at the conductor's behest on the first day. As I suspected, they form a prime Piece to his strategy. In imagination, he has he has filled these pins with if it's the same as that of the player pin in printing. They are set apart, however, by a single major difference. The red skull pins are made to imprint targets with the conductor's will. Anyone wearing the red pin is dominated by the conductor's mind. This, the further the pins spread, the more people he controls. However, red skull pins have penetrated less than half of Shibuya's real ground ground population in the last two weeks. At this rate, the conductor's strategy will end in failure. Does he do, how does he intend to p 
penetrate the rest of Shibuya. Our monitor's action is close. So yeah, we learned more about the red skull pit. So like, we learned, you know, by the end of the game, they're like, hey, it was the conductor that was bringing up the whole red skull pins and not so much a uh, cat, even though cat kind of designed them. Or was he talking about how he designed the player? Because I honestly don't remember. But yeah, how the conductor is um, talking about. So we're learning more and more about his plans, which was, you know, we learned at the end, like, hey, uh, it was to yeah, imprint everyone of Shibuya with his will, which was to, like, uh, I can't remember it quite off the top of my head. It was like, you know, to keep people in line, you know, so that Shibuya will be destroyed by the, by the opposed will. So we learn more and more about some of the stuff that they keep, uh, kept, uh, kept under wraps until, like, close to the end. So that's, again, that's what I love about these reports, and I'm glad, like, you know, they let, they do this so that we can get more and more information. Definitely. Alright, the final one for Joshua. Final day's missions come, came from the conductor. Eliminate Minamoto. Unexpected as it was, tension ran high, but the composer's quick thinking saved the day. In the end, all went according to his plan, and he successfully guided the proxy on to the next game. His solution entailed first defeating Minamoto, thereby ensuring the proxy's victory. Second, the conductor pretended to be erased by Minamoto while shielding the proxy. To accomplish this, he fled to a parallel world just before Minamoto's final attack is connected. The proxy survived the game alone, but was again unable to elect reincarnation due to the composer's illegal participation in the game. For better or worse, the game between the composer and conductor concludes in one week's time. The conductor's strategy may end in failure, but we will see. I need to keep a close eye on his future actions. All I can do is wait for the composer to inform me of which parallel world he escaped to. So we learned how Joshua survived the attack. He he wasn't like at all, you know, hurt at all during uh, that attack. He just flat out fled to the underground, or uh, fled to a new place. He was like, "All right, all right, push Neku away, and that light that's going to develop me is actually a light transporting me away." You think it's the light that's ex causing the explosion, but it wasn't. It was just plainly that. Um. So yeah, the. So there it is, right there. Again, like. We know that we, he couldn't chose resurrection because of um, uh, the composer not being there, since the composer is the only one that can choose to bring people back to life. Um, but he he still is like, mm. well, let's see, let's add this, let's add this stipulation as well that um, the reason you're playing the next game is because you had an illegal partner, and it's all his fault. So, so it's very interesting that they. That they do it like that. So I, again, it's like this is a. All these reports are very interesting. Interesting to listen to, and um, uh, so it's very, it's very nice in all honesty that like you know they do this. They give us this. I'm at level 94. I'm almost at the highest level that I can be. Uh, she can't be there, she is. Right, there we go. Put Shiki on the team. So like, I. So yeah, this is like focus. Um, is there any taboo noise here? I might have killed them all already. I think there's taboo noise here, though. So, yeah, it's very interesting that, um, you know, they do that. And such, but, like, yeah, it's very, um, like, this game has such a deep meaning. Oh, fuck me. This won't be hard. And there's no escape because I can't, because, shit. <laughs> There's no escape because I, uh, I have a taboo noise in my thing, so I have to, I have to get killed here. here it comes. Hear that? There we go. Wow, I kind of forgot that I did that. Okay, change pins and retry. Jesus, can't believe I did that. Um, so yeah, I've just basically been, uh, how I've been like uh, doing these, so I was like, okay, I'm just basically doing um, like I'm grinding out pins and such so that I can get them, you know, mastered more. Um, so do that. 
Oh, no, no. Fuck. I wanted to grab one more pin to like master. You're good as God. Yeah, Shiki's like best for like this strategy because this just involves clicking and that's like her thing is clicking. So yeah, um yeah, all those reports are like very interesting indeed. Like they keep getting more and more interesting as you keep reading them. Like you learn more and more like okay, so this like this is what they had planned from this Perspective and um, how they uh, interpreted this and that, and you know how uh, Honeycomb was like helping out in the game somewhat, even though know, like he shouldn't have. And he didn't really have a direct influence of anything in the game. It's just more so like a. Watch yourself. More so like a. Like a suggestion type thing. Go, Mr. Mew. Um, but yeah, no, it's these reports get more and more interesting, and you know, with um, with beats being the last one uh, last week, and you know, coming to conclusion, I believe. Um, I believe they're gonna like talk a little bit more about some of this stuff, and then uh, uh no, I'll, I'll save that little tidbit for the end of the next video. No, like these reports are very interesting to read for sure, and um, I re I recommend getting them because they're again they're not that hard to get, and um, and they're very very they they give so much depth to what the game is, like the game as like 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 this game is in the game, and then of course the game of um the Reapers game that we've been playing. Ooh, that scared me a bit. I was like, oh boy. Oh yeah, I also got the upgraded wallet if you guys wanted to like. So I got my upgraded wallet, so uh, that's nice. So I'm, I'm able to like uh, hold like a shit ton of money. Um, I think I can get rid of both of these. I think I already have three. Yeah. No, oh, I only had two. Oh no, but I already. Okay, but sorry. Yeah, I already had it maxed, so it's fine. The good thing about these pins is those the, those pins give a lot of money too, so so it's very helpful. Uh, I think I was working on the frog too. Or at least gonna start working on the frog. Yeah, I've just basically been uh you know having two pins up here that don't really do anything so I can get leveled up so that they're mastered, so then I can keep improving my uh, mastered pins which has gone up from E to D so that's nice I'm over 25% mastered and then look Mr. Honeycomb joined our thing that's because we um we got all the reports I believe so yeah and I'm getting more items uh I got a majority of the items the only items I really don't have was in the Shibuya store that like a lot of shit costs a lot of money so like those might be like the only ones I'm missing type thing and then, of course noise we keep defeating noise and such you know I'm getting there, like, I'm still missing this frog, don't know where I'm finding him at. Same with the jellyfish. And that might be a taboo jellyfish, so I'm gonna have to, like, you know... You know, if I ever wanted to, I could just look up, like, okay, where can I find noise? 64, type thing, so... And I believe... I think all of these are the new... All of these are ones that we're gonna see in the... In the new day, so... Very excited about that yet. And here we are, so... The only thing I got from these guys was their, their easy stuff. Pretty sure I could, I could beat him on uh, on uh, normal difficulty if I freaking you know could have changed to that. 
which is what I properly wanted. Then I could all, and then I'm just gonna make my way downtown to face this guy. See, even at this drop rate at 94 adjustment, it's still a 10% for the thing on hard. Like, that's just ridiculous! It was 100% for this, so that's cool. The default is like bad, so. Alright. But anyway, guys, I feel like this ma that video this made that video long enough now. <laughs> so anyway, guys, thank you all so much for watching this video. If you liked the video, please give that like button a click. Comment down below, check about the video, what you didn't like about the video, and let me know what do you think of the reports that we learned uh, from Joshua's week. You know, they were all pretty short, but um, very insightful. I'm sure of a lot of stuff like you know like okay so this is what Joshua had planned to do with the tracker he didn't like he knew everything right away so like he already knew everything he just wanted to know more so, so about the um the plan uh, the the conductor's plan first before he's like mm, okay I feel like I'm good that I can now show Neku where the Shibuya River is so like you know next one well, like you probably have to play one more game because you know of me so, <laughs> so like, okay, so they'll know, like, okay, this is gonna be his driving force right here to go there. So, yeah. So, so yeah, what do you guys think about, you know, all that stuff that you got from the ports? And as always, guys, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a beat. And subscribe to our main channel, too, that's in the description below. As well as follow me on Twitter. Both my main Twitter and the RPG Kingdom Get Twitter are in there, too. I want to thank you all so much for watching once again. And I'll see you all next time.